Um, you know, here's the deal with YouTube, okay? It's all this pressure to have a funny intro, but at the end of the day, it's 1.04 a.m. Now, honestly, I think it's a little unfair and a little selfish to expect that every intro is gonna have something funny about it. So let's just roll to the intro. No joke today, no joke, because who needs them, all right? I got nothing funny for you. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Rob Built. I'm your host, Rob, and today we're gonna to be talking about how to analyze your next short-term rental investment. Now, consulting a lot of people about how to get into the real estate game and how to get into Airbnb and short-term rentals in general, I think a lot of people tend to get into their head, maybe over-research a bit, and fall into what's called analysis paralysis. Now, don't get me wrong, researching is super important and should be the foundation of your investment, but there does come a certain point where over-researching can tend to be a barrier for you. So I'm hoping that in today's video, Video, I can help you analyze your next deal in a few simple steps that I always take. And I just want to say that probably at this point, I've had about 20 or so Airbnb listings, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, but I have never actually posted a loss. There has never been a month in my four years of hosting where I've actually lost money. Um, there have been maybe two months out of all of the listings where I broke even a couple of times, and that was at the very beginning of my journey. But for the most part, I've always posted a pretty generous profit for most of my listings, and I'm pretty proud of that. And I'd like to think it's because I'm pretty good at analyzing deals. So what I'd like to do today is hop into Zillow or Redfin and, and take a look at a few houses and actually comp out and analyze each house to see if it's an investment that I would take myself. Now really quick, if this video at all inspires you to become an Airbnb host, consider signing up with my link down below, and you'll get a little bonus whenever you host your first day. I'll get a kickback and I'll be assigned as your Airbnb ambassador, meaning I can give you a few tips for your personal listing. Plus it supports me and my channel, which I just think is pretty cool. Let's talk about what I look for and my criteria for specific deals. Now, I like to find properties that are in an area that have something going for it, which basically means some form of traffic that goes to that locale for a reason, right? So it could be a national park, state park, or it can be a city. Now, I don't necessarily in invest in cities anymore. That's not something that I'm really looking to do, but if you're gonna invest in a city, then I would really recommend you invest a city that has like a really big attraction to it. So think about LA or Anaheim where we have Hollywood. Hollywood! And we also have Disneyland, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Now I do know that Anaheim has very strict short-term rental regulations, so I wouldn't invest there. And I'm not really looking to invest in LA right now because it's a really big metropolitan area that's very expensive. So that would turn me to maybe Disney World, for example, which is a huge draw for Orlando. But I know that Orlando is also very strict on Airbnb laws. So what I like to do is if that's the case, start looking at some of those outer cities that are very close to Disney World, like Kissimmee. <laughs> Kissimmee, Florida, for example. And I like to consider those types of markets because the short-term rentals there are a lot more flexible when it comes to the ordinances. So whether it's a big tourist attraction like a theme park, or maybe it's a college town where college football is a really big part of the culture there, or maybe you wanna find a nice rental by big hospitals and cities, that would even be a reason for me to consider it because I know that travel nurses are a very sought out position right now in most parts of the country due to the current situation. So to sum up here, find something that has a draw to it or serves a purpose. So there's a whole spectrum here for you to consider. These are just a couple off the top of my head. And lastly, something I want you to consider, is it a place that you like? Is it a place that you wanna to go to? Is it a place that you wanna to travel to from your house? Is it a place that you can travel to? Meaning if you're in a smaller town with a smaller airport, does that airport actually fly to the smaller airport of this other town that you're looking at? A few things to consider, but ultimately you wanna enjoy it a bit. So I always encourage you to find a short-term rental that you can actually use on vacation because that's sort of what this is all about. I mean, for me, when I got into Airbnb, my dream was to have 12 different houses around the entire country. Specifically specifically because I wanted the ability to travel to a different house every month in a different part of the country and travel. Now thinking back on it, completely unrealistic to think that I could do that with a wife, child, and another kid on the way. But either way, you see my point here. I mean, the idea of having houses around the country that you can go and visit, really, I mean, that is a dream of mine and I, I'm working towards that every single day. But TLDR, find somewhere that you'd wanna live yourself. And if you wanna be extra conservative, I'd consider finding a deal that works for a long-term tenant if the short-term side of things don't work out. So this is gonna be a lot harder in certain cities like Joshua Tree, Los Angeles, Gatlinburg, where it's very popular 
popular, very saturated, and very expensive at the moment because everyone's competing to get in because interest rates are low. It would be really tough to buy a cabin here in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and make it work for the long-term model because it's almost starting to not work for the short-term model. So if you wanna keep yourself extra protected, try to make any deal that you do work for a 12-month lease with a much lower rate that you would make than with a fully booked, thriving short-term rental. That's it. <laughs> a short-term rental. Now that we've discussed my criteria and what I look for in a certain deal, do I always do this? I actually wanna comp out specific deals and see if they're houses or investments that I would consider making for myself. So I'm in Redfin here, use Trulia, Zillow, whatever you want, not an ad, but it should be an ad. Redfin, please give me a call. Seven oh no, actually I shouldn't do that. Uh, all right, so a market that I'm considering right now is the East Coast. I'm a big fan of the Shenandoah National Park area. I think that that is an underserved market. With that said, please don't go rush there and buy all the properties there because I'm doing it. I promise you there are a million properties out in the country that you can do this with. Okay, cool. All right, so let's jump into here. Now there are plenty of reasons why I like the Shenandoah area, specifically because from my research, it's a really great national park. It's right outside of Washington, DC. It's pretty close to Baltimore and a lot of different surrounding areas that really puts it in the middle of a bunch of different traffic flows kind of going through that area anyways. If you want a couple of hints on where to start looking in the country, remember I always suggest being in your backyard. <laughs> Very delayed air quotes there, but what I mean by that is being anywhere from one hour to five hours away from your short-term rental property, if you can help that. The reason I say that is I want it to be close enough to where you can travel there in a weekend if you really need to, but far enough away to where it's not a crutch where you feel like you have to go and address something on site if someone calls you with an issue. So I want you to be close enough to actually go there, check up on it, enjoy it, but far enough to where you have to hire boots on the ground and hire teams to address things for you so that you can really run it as a business. If you're looking for ideas, AirDNA actually has an article called Best Places to Invest in Vacation Rentals in 2020 and 2021. This is a really great article that'll give you a few different insights on places all over the country. And you can actually sort it out here by state. You'll look, there's anything from California, Florida, Kentucky, Minnesota, New York, North Carolina, Texas, and you can buy the full report if that's something that you wanna do. But not only does it give you a few different options, it also gives you the avenue revenue potential, which I think is very important for something like this. Pick anything on here, that's actually how I found Shenandoah. See Shenandoah, Virginia right here. The average revenue for something in Shenandoah is about $44,000, which is actually on the low side of things. So let's go ahead and run with that. Now, Shenandoah National Park is not something that you can just pop into Redfin. So what you wanna do from here is look for the city is kind of on the outskirts of it. So considering that I said Washington DC is up here, Shenandoah is over here, Baltimore is somewhere up here. You know, I wanna be somewhere in between Washington DC and Shenandoah ideally, but that's not necessarily my hard fast rule. Now I know from my research that Front Royal is a really great location, just in terms of a great thriving city right now, it's sort of in between Washington and Shenandoah. So that's where we're gonna focus our search right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at Front Royal here on Redfin. We'll type in Front Royal here. Front Royal, Virginia. And I'm just gonna start picking out a few houses that I like. In general, as much as you can just pick out any house, my particular personal policy is I wanna have a crush on that house. I want it to be a cutie, if you will. A little cutie, a little mm, croissant. I want it to be something that I like and really adore. I'm not just looking for any old house. So let's make that our first guide. Like, is there something special about it? So right off the bat, looking at this little guy here, 63 Turkey Trot Road, cute name, especially on Thanksgiving. I really like this property right here. So let's go ahead and just click on that one. And now personally for me, I find that ROIs on three twos, four threes are a lot juicier than something on a one one or a two one. So I'm typically at this point in my career looking for something with a little bit more space. But one thing I want you to keep in mind is you do you have to furnish these bigger spaces. So if you're gonna go with the 3-2 or a 4-3 and it's like two or 3,000 square feet, make sure to factor in a very healthy furniture budget for this. So let's take a look at this one on Turkey Trot Road, $279,000. It's a 2-2, 1,400 square feet. Again, I don't typically go for something this small, but it is a really cool house. And I will make exceptions if it's got something really cool about it and then it's, it's in a good location and the price is right. So let's just take a look here. All in all, what I'm seeing here, very cool facade. I like the land. I like the layout of it, actually kind of reminiscent of Casa Conejo in some ways. Got a ton of trees, so already my mind here is kind of kind of running with the ideas of like, oh, well, can I do a tree house? And then the inside definitely has some kind of character to it. It needs some work here, some new flooring. I would need to put in a little bit of money into renovations, so that's something that you're always gonna wanna budget. Like, are there minor renovations that you have to make? But all in all, 
This is a cute little home that I think with a minimal amount of cash, I can get up and running. I would say maybe less than $10,000. So $279,000. Uh, let's see how much acreage there is. 1.4 acres, a nice size lot. Maybe you could throw a tree house in the back or maybe an airstream or something like that. Remember the land hack, this is your way of getting into a house and acreage at the same time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the address here and then we're gonna go to airdna.co and we're gonna insert that address. Now, the one thing about AirDNA is that it is a subscription service. It's about $40 a month, which I highly recommend paying for because if you're talking about spending literally hundreds of thousands of dollars on an investment, then $40 a month is like a pretty low amount to invest to really feel good about your investment. Now, you don't have to do it every single month. Just do it while you're analyzing your deals. Just do it while you're looking to buy a house. You could literally cancel it after one year. So if you're interested in signing up for AirDNA, you can sign up with my link down below, but let's go ahead and pop this down in here. So when you in enter it, it should auto populate an address for you. And we know that it's a 2-2, so let's let it do its thing. So a 2-2 with four guests. Now you should be able to fit six people in there because it's a 2-2, it's 1,400 square feet. You might even be able to do eight. But as you can see, when we put six guests in there, the average revenue for this is $64,000, okay? Now let's go ahead and put eight in there and see if, if you could squeeze that in there. We actually see that the average revenue for eight guests goes down to $55,000. So it behooves you to actually keep it a really premium experience for six guests. So we see that it's about $64,000. Now the cool thing about AirDNA, they are actually integrated into the Airbnb API. So they actually take stats from all of their bookings and they can tell you very specific details like your revenue forecast in January versus February versus March versus April, right? So you're actually able to have a pretty clear view of what your occupancy is throughout the year by paying that $40, which out of full transparency, I don't always pay the $40 whenever I'm really just kind of getting into this. But now I do the more serious I get about markets. But at the very least, the Rentalizer tool right here under the Invest tab, that will provide you with the annual revenue revenue projection for free. There are a couple other tools you can use for this. There's all the rooms and mash visor if you want to cross reference and really do your due diligence here. But <laughs> this is a 10 minute YouTube video. So no one's going to watch it if I show you all those tools. I know I said 10 minutes, but 15, Caleb. Oh, the lie detector determined that was a lie. <laughs> So all in all, we see that this property could bring in possibly $64,000. Now I will say that when you have a very premium property, kind of like this, where you can really deck it out and make it look really nicely, I tend to think that AirDNA estimates a little bit low. So I think that it's within the realm of possibility that you could actually be at 70 to $80,000 for a property like this because it's so cool. Again, I think this is comping it out a little low at 68% at an average daily rate of $261, but we'll get into a deeper dive here in a second. So. Knowing that we can bring in potentially, let's just call it $65,000 to keep it super easy. Redfin has this calculator down here where you can actually input all your different data. So if you're gonna put 20% down, which is $55,000, that means that your mortgage on this is gonna be $1,167 to be approximate. Now let's round that up to about $1,500 a month, including all of your expenses like uh, bills and utilities and all that kind of stuff. 1,500 times 12 is gonna be $18,000. I don't have to do the math there, thank God. I don't look dumb. I do know that number off the top of my head. Let's say $18,000 are gonna be all of your expenses for the year. We can even round that up to be about $20,000 if you wanna just keep it like conservative here. So knowing that we're gonna make $65,000, Let's subtract our expenses from that. That leaves us with a profit of $45,000 a year. I don't know if you can see this, but if you can, it says $45,000 a year. So if you divide that by 12, you're gonna make a profit, a net profit of $3,750 per month, which is really great. So even just taking this further in terms of your cash on cash return, let's think about this from a grander scheme and talk about the actual ROI of this thing. So if you put down 20%, that would be $55,800 that you would have to spend to get into this house. So let's go ahead and take $55,800, which is your down payment. And then let's talk about what you're probably gonna spend to furnish this. It's a 1,400 square foot house. It's a two, two. You could easily spend 10 to $15,000 on this. Let's go with the middle of that. Let's go with uh, 12,500. And we're at $68,300 is your total cost out of pocket to get into this house. But I wanna account for a few other things here. You are gonna have closing costs. Closing costs aren't gonna be the biggest part of this overall expense, but let's go ahead and add another $5,000 here, which I think is probably pretty fair. So all in, you're looking at $73,500 all in to get into this property. All right, let me write this down so I don't forget. Now, if you remember, your profit on this was gonna be $45,000. So to find out what your cash on cash return is gonna be, we're gonna divide 45,000 by 73,300. 
and your cash on cash return in the first year would be 61%. That means you would have recouped 61% of your initial investment to purchase this property, which is really good. When you think about long-term real estate, your typical cash on cash returns can be anywhere from three to 10%. If you really knock it out of the park, you might have a cash on cash return that's anywhere from 10 to 15% on the long-term side of things, but that's pretty rare. If you're a long-term investor and you've gotten a 10 to 15% cash on cash return, please leave me a comment down below. I, I would love to hear about some of your specific numbers, but even then, in the best case scenario, a 15% cash on cash return, that still pales in comparison to 61% ROI. I mean, you're literally making four times as much as you would with a long-term rental in the best case scenario. So right off the bat, this is an insane deal. This is a really great deal. Just gonna go ahead and hit favorite here. And uh, you know, maybe I'll buy it, we'll see. And uh, you're not gonna be able to come in and swoop this from me because this video is coming out way after the fact. I'm a little skeptical about the AirDNA side of things. So what I wanna do is actually jump into AirDNA and assess my competitors to see how true these projections are. If they are true, I'm literally gonna put an offer in tonight because that's amazing. And if they aren't true, that's okay. That's why I'm running this analysis. Hopefully you can get some insight on how to do this for yourself. First thing we're gonna do is go to airbnb.com and we're gonna go to Front Royal. So Front Royal. Now what I like to do is leave the dates open and not specify the number of guests because that'll give you everything that's available in that particular market. So additionally, if you wanna go even further into this, what you can do is actually go to that street that the house that you're trying to buy is on and that will give you an assessment of your competitors in that specific city. So I'm gonna to go to the maps here and I'm gonna just try to find that on Airbnb. So we see so I don't have a lot of options here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open up my map here just a bit. And I'm gonna start finding places that I feel match the quality of a potential deal. So looking at this house again, really cool house, it's a 2-2. Two -two. So let's try to find stuff in that wheelhouse. So um, you could even go as far as pick a two bedroom, two bath, and then actually look for stays that are specifically geared towards that size. So now knowing we've got this guy right here, a little bit of a unique stay. We've got this guy, it's not too far from here. Okay, we've got this house right here. When I'm comping out my competitors, I like to see that they have a decent amount of reviews so that I can actually use them as a data point. Then we've got this little guy over here and all right, cool. So I think this should be good to kind of get us started here. So now what we're gonna do is actually jump into the calendars. Now this one is gonna be a little bit tough to compare ourselves to because it is a little bit of a unique stay. It's almost like a watchtower with a really, really great view, but it can at least show us what's possible if you had a unique stay in Front Royal. So jumping down to their calendar here, we do see that they have a 4.93, so people like this place. It's got 104 reviews on it, and it's $285 a night. So moving down to their calendar, we can see that the rest of April is actually doing pretty good. So right now is the 19th. So they've got that booked. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight days booked for the rest of April. Now you're gonna see that it's $285 a night right here. That might actually change around whenever you start inputting different dates. So let's just see how that changes. That stays at 285 stays at 285, stays at 285. Okay, cool. So this place is consistently at 285. One other thing that I want you to always check is does their price change whenever you change the amount of guests? And as you can see, it jumps up to 335. Let's just loosely average this out to 315 because some days you might have four guests, some days you might have two. We know that there are eight days left in April. So eight times 315. So for the rest of April, they've booked about $2,500. We don't know how much they booked in the past because that's always gonna stay great out. So I actually find that it's helpful to move into May and comp out what they've made in May. So in May, they've got seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, plus 14, 25, 26, 27. They've got 27 days booked at $315 a night, it's about $8,500 for this specific place. Now, remember, really nice place. Uh, their June looks like it's pretty booked too. July looks like it's pretty booked. August is looking like it's pretty booked. You know, my guess is that they are more than likely booked about 80% of the year. So if they're booked 80% of the year just based on looking at their calendar, it's possible that they are making about $91,000 a year on this specific property. Sorry again if you can't see that if it's out of focus, which it probably is because it always is. So cross-referencing a lot of the stuff and making an educated guess based on what I know, this makes a lot of sense because if you go back here to AirDNA, you see that it was about $65,000. Now remember when I said, hey, if it's a really nice place and you really do it well, you could make anywhere from 70 to $80,000? Well, that makes a lot of sense that this place is making $91,980 a year. But again, this is a bit of a unique stay. So now I wanna go in and validate this further with more comps. So looking at this, this is a little bit more of a straightforward home. Um, looks like they did have professional photos taken. Great, okay, cool. 
a cute home, similar vibes to the one that we're actually comping out. So I actually like this a lot more for comparison's sake because it's a little bit closer to the house on Turkey Trot Road. Now, one thing to consider though that I didn't really look at whenever I was clicking on this, they don't have any reviews or any ratings at all. So this is a brand new listing. I, I really can't use this as, as a data point, but we can at least take a look at their calendar and see. For April, it looks like they've got some days booked here. Um, and then for May, they have some days booked here too. Let's see if this price changes around. They're charging about $200 a night. $200 a night, and then let's see how this changes if you go up to six guests. Okay, it sticks around about $800, $200 a night. And it looks like they're June and they're July actually booking pretty well. So it looks like they're doing okay, all in all. Looks like they're not really having trouble booking based on what I'm seeing here. Again, I can't take this too seriously because there just isn't enough data for this listing to really reference, but just looking at $200 a night, multiplying that by an 80% occupancy, that puts us at $58,400, which if we click back over here, we see that it's actually $64,400 here in AirDNA. So all in all, I'm starting to see, okay, maybe $65,000 is within the realm of possibility when looking at my competition. So now let's go ahead and just go to another one here. All right, here's one that I like a little bit more. It's two bedrooms, two baths. So it's exactly like the house that we're looking at. They have a couple of faults here. They didn't take professional photos. Please take professional photos of your photography. They are literally leaving thousands of dollars, maybe even tens of thousands of dollars on the table every year because they didn't want to spend 150 to $500 on professional photography. Now, if you're the owner of this listing, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry for saying that. Just pay for the professional photos. So moving down here to this calendar, we see that their April is looking pretty good. They've got 35 reviews, so I can believe that they're established. I also like to go into the reviews and make sure that their reviews are pretty recent. So we see a lot of April in here. We see March. So that means that they've been open for the past couple of months. And I can probably assume that they've booked a decent amount of this April right here. So now we're on the 19th here. Let's go ahead and take a look at how much they've made. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for the rest of April at 150. But again, I wanna click around, make sure that that's their actual price. Okay, so 150 seems consistent. 150 seems consistent. 150 seems consistent. All right, now let's go ahead and up the amount of guests and see if that changes. Okay, if you go up to four guests, you see that the price actually goes up to $250. So that means that their average is roughly about $200 a night. Now it looks like their maid is doing okay. Their June is wide open. Their July is wide open. So is their August. So all in all, it's hard to really comp out what this place is making, but let's just go ahead and go with even like a 60% occupancy. That's 219 nights a year at $200 a night, $43,800, which is lower than the 64,000 number here on AirDNA. But there are a lot of different things about this listing that could use some work, i.e. they didn't take professional photos. I don't even know what their house looks like based on these four photos right here. Um, they look like they have Instagram filters. I have no idea what the space is like. They took photos on a potato phone. I wanna take a look at their listing here. Oh, okay, this solves it. Like, they don't even have a fully blown out listing. They don't have anything written out. For reference, Airbnb listings have nine different sections. You should treat those as an essay or as a mini blog and blow those out. They literally have one section with one little sentence, and that is all you know about this property. So it makes 100% sense that something like this is not completely booked out. And then lastly, I wanna comp out Lisa's Getaway Cabin here. So it's a 4.81, they've got 26 reviews. Let's head down to their calendar. Looks like for the rest of April, they are booked. For May, it looks like they're actually pretty booked. They've got one week open. So I wanna click here and just make sure that their price stays consistent. Cool, it does. Yep, stays consistent. And then let's take a look at their number of guests. So how does that price change? It goes to 175 if you have six guests. So, Oh, actually goes to 195 if you have six guests. The rest of their June is booked, then they've got July open as well. So let's take a look here. Goes to 184, so let's go ahead and just say that this is a $175 a night. We see that they have a bunch of April, March reviews, all that kind of jazz. So strong listing overall, strong bookings. I'm not gonna math it out because it does pretty much confirm what I'm looking for, which is can Turkey Trot make $279,000 a year? And based on what I'm seeing in the numbers and the comps, the answer to me is yes. Now I wanna go ahead and just verify all this and make sure that it's a pretty nice listing. Yeah, pretty cute listing. They didn't take professional photos. You know, the headline could use a little bit of work in my opinion, but you know, that's a personal preference there. And then it looks like they actually did blow out part of their Airbnb listing. 
but not as much as I'd like to see. Overall, I know that if this was my listing and I took professional photos, I blew out the, the listing description, I made a better headline, I know that I could probably book this at a much higher rate than they're booking right now. But I'm very good at optimizing different listings like this. Remember, if you wanna sign up for Airbnb and you sign up with my link down below, you'll get a small bonus, I'll get a bonus which funds the channel, and I'll be connected as your Airbnb ambassador so I can give you some advice like this on how to fix your listings. That's pretty much how to analyze a deal. I had a few other properties open and I was gonna walk you through the numbers and how to do that for every single property Property, but I don't feel like that's necessary because this is probably the longest video that's ever been on the channel. But hopefully you find it useful in your short-term rental journey. There are a few other things that I do, a few other little tricks and tips here. But again, this is already a long video. This is the basics of how I comp out a deal for myself and how I analyze if an investment is worthwhile for me. Looking through all the different comps and looking at Turkey Trot, I think that's a great investment. Whoever ends up snagging that house has a really great investment on their hands. Big fan of that one. I would buy that for myself personally if I had the resources resources in the time to do that. But I really do this every single day, several times a day, all the time. Um, I know I was kind of going quick here, but I'm really good at this. At a certain point, this comes second nature to you. It pretty much all comes down to research, and at the end of the day, your gut, because you can do all this research and find out everything you wanna know about this property and find out if it makes money, but you still want your gut to co-sign on this. You want your gut to be like, yeah, I feel good about this one. I know that this one is gonna crush it. If I come in and do these five things, I'll make a lot of money doing it, or I can make even more money if I do these upgrades. A lot of the times with experience, your timeline for research gets smaller and smaller and smaller as you can really start to identify what's right about a property, any potential red flags, or any other things to consider in general. So hopefully, if found this helpful. Hopefully it makes sense. I'm always skeptical that these videos ever make sense and then Caleb hooks it up and makes them make sense for me. If you're one of the people that found this helpful, do me a favor. Smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell button so you're notified anytime I make more Airbnb or short-term rental content for the channel. But yeah, I think that wraps up today's episode of Rob Bell. Oh, leave me a comment. Leave me a comment about something, something you learned today. All right, guys. Uh, all right, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Wish I had a more exciting outro, but I guess I'll just do the old hand tap.